So this is a Sun 504 distributor tester. It's probably 40 or 50 years old, like so much in this lab. And we actually have it connected to a Chevy V8 distributor, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to test the distributor. We're going to do a variety of things. Um, one thing we're going to do is just to check out the accuracy of the cam lobes. So hopefully you've seen the video that talks about distributors and you understand the nature of the cam lobes and their purpose for opening and closing the breaker points. Um, we're also going to test the centrifugal advance. Um, we're going to test the vacuum advance. And then we're also going to see how the dwell angle is going to affect the advance. So the dwell angle is basically the amount of time that the breaker points are closed and the magnetic field is building up within the coil. So first thing we need to do is we uh, need to make sure it's properly calibrated. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to run it at, uh, let's see, I guess zero. So first we put this on right hand drive. And then I just need to check my notes here real quick. Okay. Yeah, so we don't want it spinning at this point, but we just want to make sure that it's on right hand drive, which is going to be clockwise rotation. Um, now we're going to take this one lead, which is actually hooked directly up to the breaker points. I mean, it's almost impossible to get this big alligator clip right onto the breaker points. So that's why I have this little alligator clip attached. And then this is our ground. So we're just going to hook these two together. And then we're going to come over here and we're going to make sure that this is on cal, which stands for calibrate. And then you can see there's this set line. We're a little bit out of calibration. So we're just going to move this until it's you know, pointing at the set line. Well, that looks pretty good. So now it's properly calibrated. So we'll put it back to eight for the eight cylinder engine. And then I'm just going to go ahead and reconnect these. So we'll put the ground back up to the hex nut. I mean, really, you could hook this up to anywhere on the machine. But that's why that nut is there. And then we'll just hook this back up to the points. So now we're basically ready to go. Now, the first thing that we want to do is just check out the accuracy of the cam lobe. So it's on right hand drive. We're going to turn this clockwise, I'm sorry, counterclockwise, and it should start to rotate. Okay. And let's see, we want to bring it up to about 300 RPM. Um, we're on the low speed range here. We can go from high to low. So keep it on low for the time being. And we'll set this at 300 RPM. So you can see we're right at 300 RPM or less. And now we're just going to check out the accuracy of the cam lobe. Now, unfortunately, these little arrows are very, very dim. Um, I'm going to see if I can get them to be brighter. No, uh, it's just an old machine. So unfortunately, it's just not very bright. So what we're going to do is we're going to see how far apart each of the orange arrows is. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to use this ring here. And this ring has calibrations on it. I'm going to set the ring so that it points right at zero. And you can do this on any of the one arrows. Okay. Now, again, it's rather dim, so it's going to be a little bit hard to get it accurate. But nonetheless, it looks like right now this arrow at least in my view, is pointing right at zero. And then we're going to see how accurate the others are. Now, if the cam lobe is brand new, then each arrow should light up at exactly 45 degree intervals. Okay, after all, it's an eight cylinder distributor every 45 degrees. We have to send a spark to the spark plug and the distributor rotates once um, to send the spark to each cylinder, all right? Um, and then you can see that it's calibrated all around. So again, this one's at zero. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, the next one looks like it's just exactly at 45, so that's great. The next one, uh, not quite. It looks like maybe it's a little bit below 90. So I might call it 89 and a half, something like that. Um, the next one looks like it's pretty much right on 135, and just et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? Some of them are going to be right on, you know, 225, 270, et cetera. Some are going to be off by a little bit. Um, so if the distributor is worn, they're going to be off a little bit. So what you want to do is you just simply want to record 
the number of degrees that essentially each cylinder is firing. Now, nothing is being fired, right? We're just sending a current to a little flash tube, which actually sits un underneath this housing here, and rather than actually having a current go to a particular um, cylinder. But nonetheless, that's how this device works. So that's the first part of the test, is to make sure that the cam lobe is accurate. Okay? Now, the next part of the test is going to be our centrifugal advance curve. So here, um, the first thing they want to do at this point is just set the dwell angle at 28 degrees just to make sure that everything is uniform. So right now we might notice that the dwell angle is actually at 30 degrees. So what I want to do is I want to take this uh, little Allen wrench and uh, I'm going to put it right in there and this is now connected to the breaker points. So I'm just going to turn it until it's at 28. All right, so now it's at 28. Our speed is still 300. So that looks like it's set appropriately now. Okay, so we'll take the elements out. And now we're ready to go. So what we're going to do here is we're going to start at about, third, uh, at about 300, um, maybe 200 or so. And then we're going to go up as high as we can until we just get no more centrifugal advance. Okay, so Let's just drop this down to about 200. And then at the same time, we need to adjust the ring. And it just has to point at any one arrow. You, you don't want to look at all eight arrows. You just want to look at one arrow and then just see how that is going to be affected by speed. Okay. So what you'll notice is that as the speed increases, the arrow should start to move, right? If this is rotating clockwise and we're advancing the spark, then these arrows should start moving backwards, that is counterclockwise around the ring by a certain number of degrees. And basically, you're going to do this every 200 RPM, and you're going to see if there's any adjustment to, um, you know, the location of that arrow. Now, actually, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an arrow over here on this side for this illustration. And that's because the arrow is actually in the shadow of the housing, and therefore it's a lot easier to see. Okay, so it's lined up right on zero right here, as you can see. And now I'm going to make the adjustments. So we'll just go again in 200 increments. So we're going to rotate this knob here counterclockwise. We'll go up to 400 RPM. And we'll see if that arrow moves at all. So it looks like it has eh, not really moved too much, right? So we'll do it more. Going up to 600. And now, let's see. Now you can see it's definitely moved a little bit, right? It's not pointing at zero anymore. It's now at about four. Uh, maybe four and a half degrees. So the spark has advanced by four and a half degrees as we've increased by another 200 RPM. We'll bring it up to 800 RPM. And if everything is as it should be, it will have advanced some more. Yep, so now it looks like we've advanced by about seven and a half or eight degrees. And basically we're just going to keep doing this, right? We just keep increasing the speed. At some point, um, you'll have to switch from low to high RPM range. So I just click the switch over. Um, so, you know, now we're at a thousand. And at a thousand RPM, it's moving a little bit more. And now it looks like we've advanced by about nine or ten degrees. Anyway, I think you get the point here, right? So we're just going to keep increasing the speed. And eventually, um, what we'll find is that it's not going to increase anymore. So we'll just keep it going. And it goes faster, faster, faster. And again, at some point, it's just not going to increase anymore. Um, looks like that's already happening now. We're at about 1,600 RPM or thereabouts. And that's when we would stop this particular test. So let me just dial it back down. 
And the next thing we want to do is the vacuum advance test. So let's bring it back down to somewhere in the range of three to 400 or two to 300. I guess in your lab manual, it says set it at 300. <coughs> so we'll set it at 300 and then we won't have to make any more adjustments on that. All right, so now we're right at 300 RPM. So now we do the vacuum advance. So the first thing I would like to do is, um, you know, again, set the arrow or set the ring so that it's set to zero. And again, I'm gonna use the same one that I did before, the one that's kind of in the shadow of the housing here, just so it'll be easier to see. And now what we wanna do is we wanna turn on the vacuum pump. So there's this little switch here. Now again, on a real car or a real engine, this line would be hooked up to the intake. So what we'd really be doing is just uh, adjusting the throttle position. You know, it's like you putting your foot to the floor here and increasing the throttle or decreasing the throttle. Um, this first setting here with no advance is actually gonna correspond to where we're at wide open throttle. So we'll turn on the vacuum pump. You might hear the pump come on. And then I'm gonna adjust the vacuum regulator. You will have to turn this several turns before it actually engages. Um, but the vacuum regulator will have finally engaged. So now we're at zero. And let's just make sure that this is still lined up at zero, which it is. Um, and now we're going to begin this test. So here's your first point. It's at zero and there's no advance. Um, so we're just going to increase the vacuum in one inch of mercury increments. Whoop. All right, so now it's at one, and it looks like it has not advanced yet. So we bring it up to two, not advanced yet. Three, not yet. Four, not yet. This is usually where students think, oh, the system must be broken. But no, I mean, there's only a range at which the vacuum advance is gonna operate. So we're just gonna keep going in one inch increments everyone recording the fact that we have no advance yet and usually when we get to somewhere around seven six seven eight somewhere in that range that's where we're going to start to change so at seven inches there's no advance at eight inches of mercury now we're getting a little advanced right now we've moved ahead by about one degree or so maybe one and a half then we move up to nine and now we've advanced by a couple degrees more or less um, we move up to ten and maybe, what, three degrees or so. Anyway, I think you get the point. Now, let me just note something that on this particular distributor tester, um, this particular um, dial has a dead spot on it. As I continue to move it clockwise, you'll see that the vacuum is actually dropping. Well, that doesn't mean you're done with the test. It just means that we really need to replace this little uh, rheostat here. Um, anyway, just move past the dead spot. Okay, so we're past the dead spot. Now we're back up to 10 again. And we just keep going, right? We go up to 11. It is advanced by another degree or so. Up to 12, 13, 14, 15. Um, I'm up to 16 now. And now we've advanced by a good 8 or 9 degrees. And again, at some point, it's just not going to advance anymore. So usually that occurs around there. So, you know, I'm at 19. It's no better than it was at 18. So once we get to the point where it's no longer advancing, well, then we're done with this test. So we'll just turn the vacuum regulator back down. And once it's at zero, we're gonna throw off the vacuum pump. By the way, you don't wanna rotate this continuously. At some point, the whole knob is just gonna come right off the machine. So once it goes to zero, you just stop turning it. All right, vacuum pump goes off. Okay. And now the next part of this test is to see how the dwell angle is gonna affect the advance. Right. So we're going to do much the same thing. We're going to keep it at 300 RPM. Looks like my speed dropped a little bit. Keep it at 300 RPM. Yeah, I guess it was right. Um, and now we're going to see how the vacuum advance is going to be impacted by the dwell angle. So again, we're just going to keep this at zero, the ring at zero for one of the arrows. Um, we're at 28. Um, so you can go either direction you want. Personally, I just start by going downwards. So I'm going to adjust this from 28 down to 27. Whoop, wrong way. All right, 
So we're at 27. And then we'll see that well, it looks like it's advanced by maybe a half a degree, maybe a degree, somewhere in that range. And then we'll just keep going, right? In fact, let me walk the front this way. Uh, so now we'll bring it down to 26. And again, it looks like we've advanced eh, maybe a, another half a degree or so. Anyway, I think we get the point, right? So we keep adjusting it, 25, 24. I'm just going to go to 23. That's going to be the last data point in this direction. And you can see that it has advanced by a couple of degrees, right? So we're going to do the same thing by retarding. Um, well, I shouldn't say by retarding. You see how the uh, spark advance is going to retard when we actually increase the dwell angle. So here I'm just going to adjust the dwell angle We'll just go back quickly to 28. <coughs> Pardon me. And then we're going to start moving the other direction. So here we're at 29. And again, at 29, it looks like eh, not really much of a change. Up to 30. Yeah, it looks like it's recharged by uh, maybe a degree, half a degree, something like that. Anyway, you just keep going up. And we're going to go up to about 33 degrees of dwell angle. And again, you can see that it is now retarded by, what, about two and a half, three degrees, something like that. So this will be the final portion of this distributed test experiment. And when you're done, I would just ask you to put the dwell angle back to 28 degrees. Um, let's make sure we spin this back to zero and then turn it off. By the way, you never want to turn it off when it's still spinning. I mean, it will stop. Um, what it's really doing is it's just stopping a little motor that's inside the console here. Whoops, wrong switch. It just turns off a uh, little motor that's inside the console. Um, that motor is actually connected to a uh, kind of a round wedge um, that's connected to the distributor. And there's just a little belt that's between the motor and that round wedge. Um, when you're adjusting the speed, it's just moving this wedge in and out um, and therefore changing the diameter is connected to the belt. Um, what we found happens is if you keep this on and then you turn the motor on, um, if it's not in the zero position, it may immediately cause the belt to slip and jump off the track. Um, and then it's a big pain to get in there and put it back on. You know, actually, you don't just get in here. You actually open up the backside of the little console and it's a big pain. So nonetheless, this is your distributor test experiment.